What's up everyone? Thanks for all your questions on Facebook. There was a lot of great ones, but I've narrowed it down to 15, so uh, let's get to it. Sean Cole asks, what was your first car that you learned how to drift in? My first car was a 240SX. I used to just go out, have fun, didn't even really know what I was doing. Just throwing the car around, power sliding, doing donuts. And uh, then I learned of drifting and fell in love. Ryan Abdullah. How did you start your career off and what advice would you give someone trying to pursue the same? For me, you know, getting into drifting was just kind of a natural progression of my life. I was always into cars, I raced motocross, I was always into action sports. And just having fun in cars is where my love for sliding around and, and, and just playing behind the wheel of a car started. I learned of drifting, started going to local events and realized that it was something that I was good at and I loved and uh, I chased a dream. You know, for somebody that wants to get involved in drifting, you know, my best recommendation is to have fun. Don't get into drifting because you think you're going to make a ton of money or you think you're going to get sponsors. Do it because it looks like fun. The lifestyle is amazing. The camaraderie and the people that you meet in the scene is incredible. And uh, that is why you should love drifting. And if it goes to the next level, to where you can even consider turning it into a career, then that's awesome. That's just an added bonus. Lance Johnson has asked, what do you do to prepare for a race? Well, a lot of that's a secret, but the overall gist is basically I eat good, healthy, clean food, have a pretty strict diet, and a, a very strict workout regimen for both my mind and my body. Gets me clear, gets me centered, and gets me ready to rock when it becomes game day. Bo Butner asks, before you go to battle, what is on your iPod playlist and what gets you in the zone? I got a little bit of Kid Rock, some old school AFI, Motley Crue, and of course you got to have a little bit of Lil Wayne. I personally use music to keep me relaxed. It keeps my mind off everything, and I go to the line as relaxed as possible and allow my adrenaline to build naturally. As far as getting in the zone, there's a whole lot leading up to event that I do that, but again, I, I just try to be relaxed and trust myself and not overthink it and just go out there and do what I have confidence that I know how to do. Kyle Vina asks, who is your rival or the most fun driver to drift with? That's two different people. My rival has to be Daijiro Yoshihara, my Falcon Tire teammate, but he kicked my butt three times last year, and I'm definitely coming for him this year. The funnest driver to drift with Hands down, Chris Forsberg. Very good friend of mine. We've been driving together for almost 10 years. And uh, when we're on the track, it is no holds barred. We go as hard as we possibly can. And uh, we're not scared to touch each other's door uh, without crashing each other. So uh, definitely a good time running with Forsberg. Chad Dugan has asked, with the progression of Formula D, do you think we will ever see drifting at the X Games alongside with Rally? That's a great question. I honestly don't know or understand why drifting isn't in the X Games yet. I mean, it's a perfect fit. It's a judge motorsport. It's an action sport of motorsports. So uh, that's a really good question. Maybe uh, write ESPN and, and let them know that you want to see drifting uh, on the X Games. Ryan Fairjag has asked, what type of excitement does drifting give you rather than rally car racing or traditional racing? You know, traditional racing and rally car racing are two different things. You know, for me, traditional racing, I have huge respect for the drivers it's a very different discipline though you know drifting you're very aggressive and you're on the limit all the time showing your style showing your personality and uh, whereas road racing you you kind of have to get on the fast line you have to hold back a little bit save tires and and you have to be aggressive but only sometimes i personally prefer like drifting to be aggressive all the time as far as rally racing, rally racing and drifting are, are very similar as far as the techniques and the fun factor and being aggressive and going flat out. However, obviously rally racing is time, drifting is judged, and uh, obviously rally racing is a lot more endurance than uh, it takes for the quick spurts and drifting. But uh, as far as the overall excitement, for me, you know, the fact that drifting enables you to show your personality and self-expression, that is what draws me to it and it makes it the most exciting motorsport in my eyes. Although, rally is a good time. Felipe Avatol asked, are you going to try competing in rally or any other type of motorsports in the future? That's a good question. You know, I love driving and any opportunities that I get to be in the seat of a vehicle, I'm all about it. I mean, 
to me, driving something as hard as I possibly can drive it. I love it, and that's what I want to do. Drifting is my passion. It's who I am. It's what I am. But there's no doubt that opportunities are opening up, and I definitely do have an interest in rallycross. And uh, this year, hopefully, uh, I think I'll be jumping in one of my buddy Casey Curry's trucks and doing a uh, torque race. So uh, stay tuned. Check out how that works out. But, uh, you know, I'm a motorsports and a, a, a car enthusiast, and I just want to have fun behind the wheel. So anything that's fun and I get the opportunity to drive it, you better believe I'll jump at it. Ryan Mitchell Harding asks, was it your personal decision to shy away from the blown 5.0 liter for a naturally aspirated 5.4 this year? Or did the decision come from someone else? If so, why? That was a 100% team decision. Uh, we basically wanted to get a little bit of weight out of the front of the car to help with uh, faster flicks and initiations as well as faster direction changes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really agile cars out there, and, uh, you know, we've been hanging with them fine, but everybody is continuing to progress, so this is our way at staying on the forefront of performance in uh, Formula Drift. Winston Hall asks, do you think a four-cylinder turbo or rotary still have a chance in FD with all the big horsepower V8s? I love the sound of all engines at Redline and hope it doesn't become a V8-only type event. Well, Winston, you know, a lot of people are talking about this V8 takeover and this and that, and... You know, the fact of the matter is, you know, to touch on why people are using V8s. You know, uh, this is America, and V8s are very well known and easy to make power. Parts are readily available, very affordable, and again, it's easy to make horsepower and torque, which is key for drifting. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more uh, affordable budget-wise, it makes a lot more sense, things are a lot more readily available. So that's why you're starting to see this. You know, drifting started in Japan. So everybody started out in four cylinders, which was what everybody else was doing. And as the sport progressed and people started to understand what makes a drift car fast and, and the amount of grip that you need and what you have to do to turn the wheels and tires with that grip is, you know, is horsepower and torque. So um, you're definitely going to keep seeing it happen. As far as can four cylinders and rotaries uh, be competitive? Sure, they just have to make a lot of power. And uh, again, making power to match a V8 out of a four cylinder is pretty uh, expensive. And rotaries, you know, a lot of guys I know have a lot of trouble holding rotaries together. So for me personally, you know, from a reliability standpoint, again, the V8 wins. I agree with you though. Love the sound of a rotary. Love the sound of a four cylinder screaming, making a ton of power, turbo whistling. I mean, it's it's definitely uh, a cool thing. And and uh, you know, I started out with a four cylinder turbo, and I love the way it feel. But uh, again, you know, there's a difference between just loving the way that it sounds or the way that it feels to what you need to be competitive in a professional motorsport. And uh, that's why you're seeing V8. John R. Mariotti, is there any better feeling in the world than drifting sideways in a sick Mustang? Uh, no, there's really not. Um, you know, it's. You know, I've been doing this for, for, for 10 years, and I've been driving a Mustang for five. And uh, if I wasn't having the time of my life every time I was behind the wheel, I wouldn't be doing it. And uh, there's no doubt about it. You know, drifting is, is like being in control of the best roller coaster you can imagine. And uh, damn right, it is very fun. Christina High, what has been your favorite, most memorable matchup in your Formula D career so far? Whew. That's a really tough one. You know, uh, all the drivers in Formula D are incredible. The battles, most all of them have something that you kind of get done and you're like, Whew, you know, wow, that was crazy. And two, uh, that was amazing driving with that guy. You know, he's really fun to drive with. But, uh, the most recent one that I would say is my battle with Tanner Faust at Irwindale. Um, I honestly haven't been scared like that in a long time. I mean, literally, Tanner and I were pretty much, uh, I think, maybe trying to kill each other because we were going, entering the bank at Irwindale faster than I've ever imagined entering, and we're just on each other. Couldn't see coming past one of the clips. I mean, it was just literally crazy what, what we were putting each other through. But uh, that's probably one of my most memorable, most recently at least. So uh, that's a good question. Travis Reeb has asked, what's your favorite car currently in your personal garage? I don't, I can't say that I have a favorite. Um, the Mustang RTR 
I love it. It's a great daily. It is fun. It's classy. It's aggressive. And it handles and drives like unbelievable. Uh, I would have, to, if I had to narrow it down, I would say the RTRX is the favorite car that I own. Uh, it's everything I've ever wanted to do to a car. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to make it all happen. So uh, that, I'd have to say, if you made me choose, the RTRX is the favorite car that I have. Toy Tran asks, what do you do when you're not racing? In other words, what are your favorite hobbies? Well, I love kayaking. I like mountain biking. Being outdoors, especially when we have good weather here in beautiful Maryland, it's awesome. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to, out back of my house, have a 65-acre area that the owner is cool enough to let me play with and uh, essentially have my own personal playland. I have a couple uh, rally toys, a Baja truck, I have a side-by-side -side dirt bike, and uh, I just really enjoy going back there and uh, hanging out with some friends and bouncing off each other's doors. And uh, another thing I've recently started to do is uh, clay pigeon shooting. It's definitely relaxing, and uh, there's something that feels amazing about shooting. Last but not least, Rathena Gomer asked, if you could choose to have any superhero power, which would it be? And how would you use it within the realm of drifting? Well, aside from being able to shoot fireballs from my hands, I think that I'd like to have the control to go back in time. That way, if I entered a little bit too hot or smashed real hard into a wall, I could just reset, adjust, and do it again. I think that they would call me the rewinder or something like that. But anyway, seriously, y'all, thank you very much for your support. Not just this, but everything, you know, leading up to my championship last year, the videos we post, you know, you guys are, you know, the support that you all offer and, and the cheers is just overwhelming and uh, greatly appreciated. And, uh, you know, hope we get to continue to have some more fun throughout the year. Looking forward to uh, defending that championship. I know I have a target on my back, but uh, I'm going for it and uh, bringing a little bit more than what I brought last year. So, uh, once again, thanks a lot. If I read your question... You get one of these sweet 5-0 hats, somebody will contact you soon. In fact, my wonderful fiancé will be contacting you soon and uh, getting your address to send you a hat. Thanks again. Rock out.